Today, we're going to set up timeouts for our sockets. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being here. Recently, I've been doing some videos on programming, specifically on UDP and datagram sockets. Recently, I made a video that showed just a simple example of how you send a packet and how you can receive it using a datagram socket using the UDP protocol. But that video really just scratched the surface. It just showed how you actually send and how you receive, but it, there are some features that we may want to look at. And today, I want to add one of those features. Specifically, I want to add a timeout, which can be really useful in a lot of the programs that we write when we don't want to wait forever on something like a receive call. Before we dive in, this video is going to have source code and you can get access to all the source code from all my videos through Patreon. And I just wanna say a huge thanks to all of you who support this channel, either through Patreon, buying merch, or telling a friend, or all the different ways that you help support what I'm trying to do here. You make this channel possible. And for the rest of you, if you are enjoying this free content and you wanna help me keep making more of it, please do consider helping out. It is a big help. Thank you. But now let's take a look at the code. So today I'm back in my simple UDP examples from my recent tutorial. Specifically, I'm looking at the receive program. If you missed that video, check it out. But I made a send program and a receive program. So today we're just going to play around with the receive program. But you could the things we're going to do here, you could do in the send as well. But the main reason I picked this one is because down here we have this uh, receive from call right here, which is going to wait for a packet to come in. And by default, this is just going to wait forever. It's going to wait until a packet packet arrives, and sometimes that's fine, but sometimes we want to limit how long we're going to wait. Maybe I'm okay waiting for a few seconds or minutes, but eventually I want to give up and allow the current thread to do something else. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to add a timeout to our receive program. We're going to make it wait for a certain amount of time, maybe a few seconds, and then we're going to have it give up. And we'll do that right here in this receive program after we call bind right here, but before we call receive from, okay? So we're just going to add uh, some code right in here to set up a timeout. And to do this, we're going to call the set sock opt function. Now, this is a general function that lets you set different socket options. And if we come down here and check the man page for set sock opt, then you can see we can come down here and we can get a list of all the different options that you can set. Of course, let me know down in the comments if you want to see videos on any of these options and how they're used. But today I want to focus down here on uh, these two options. Well, specifically just this last one, the uh, receive timeout, but send timeout will be exactly the same. Just there's one for sending and one for receiving. And so let's jump back here in our code and we're going to call set sock opt and we're going to pass in our UDP RX socket, that is the socket we've been working with, that's the one we're receiving on. The second argument here is the level, so this is SOL socket. Now some options can be set at different protocol levels. For today, we're just gonna deal with the socket level. And then our third argument is the option name we are setting. So that is the receive timeout option. And now at this point, we're going to pass in a pointer to a struct that's gonna specify what our timeout is and a size, basically telling what the size of that thing is. So something like size of timeout. Now, both of these, of course, I have not defined yet. And so let's define them. And to do that, we'll come up here and say struct timeval timeout. So this is just a struct that exists to allow us to represent time values or you know durations. And it has two members to it. The first one is the number of seconds. So we're going to do timeout.tv underscore sec. So that's the number of seconds. I'm going to set that to five, for example, but it could be anything. That means I'm going to wait five seconds. And then the other here is the number of microseconds. This is, of course, for very small sleeps. I'm going to set this to zero for today. So this is just saying we are going to set a timeout of five seconds and no microseconds. And now our code should work. We are specifying a receive timeout of five seconds and no microseconds. And of course, this function could return errors if we made a mistake. So let's use our check function that we used before to just add a add an error message here. So we're going to say setting timeout failed. So now we should have a working timeout. So let's compile it here. We'll come down here and compile our code. And if we run it, 
Now you remember before we had to just specify a port, so I'm just gonna pick 9800, doesn't really matter which one it is, but here we will wait and then you can see, okay, so this receive from returns an error. After five seconds, it returns an error saying that the resource is temporarily unavailable. So this works, we've created a timeout, we've changed the behavior of receive from by setting this timeout and that's great, but I wanna add one more thing because often if you're gonna set a timeout, you often wanna treat timeouts slightly differently than say uh, another socket error, something like the network went down or connection was broken for some other reason. So in our code, we may want to differentiate between the two. So right now I just have this single check that detects any sort of error, anything that is not a packet arriving to receive from. But let's look at how we could differentiate it. So if I wanna check for a timeout, what I'm gonna do here is say, well, first of all, if this bytes received happens to equal socket, error, so that's the check that actually check is already making here, but we're gonna say, and the error no global variable is set to E would block. Okay, so E would block just says, hey, if there wasn't a timeout here, this would still block, but it's not because there's a timeout, so we're giving up. So here then we can say something like, our socket timed out. And then here we can say else. And then, yeah, so we can do the, the normal error checking if it's not this specific case where it timed out. So this is basically how you differentiate timeouts from any other error. So we come down here and we can recompile it and we can run it and we'll wait for five more seconds. And then we should see now it should give us, yeah. So now of course the logic of my system doesn't really work great because I still am now printing out received a packet. So instead, let's just say, return exit failure. Okay, now we should have the behavior that I want, which is that it's gonna print out our request timed out and not say we received a packet. And we do, and so that's great. And so folks, really simple, that's how you, in one of your socket programs, can set, can use this set sock opt function in order to set a timeout and you pick whatever you want that timeout to be. And that can be really handy in a lot of different network programming examples. I do hope this is helpful. I hope it helps you in a future project or current project you're working on. Hope you learned something and I will see you later.